My name is Nick Amaro, and I am the General Sales Manager at Prestige Imports in Lamborghini of Miami. And today I'd like to introduce you to the Aventador SVJ Roadster on test drive. for a while now. As the car was developed, they went improving the car and this is the latest and greatest version from Lamborghini. And it's also the last uh, Aventador that will ever be made. Limited to 800 units worldwide, it is a very, very collectible piece, especially considering that there's a lot of rumors that this will be the last naturally aspirated Lamborghini V12 engine to be produced. As you know, Lamborghini was um, revolutionary when they first started putting V12s in the, in the back of a car. It hasn't been done very often by any other company and uh, it's kind of their, their staple, you know? The big engine, big V12, powerful rear engine sports cars. The SVJ is no different. Starting off with a carbon fiber monocoque chassis, the car is very, very firm. The suspension setup is actually much softer than I expected it to be, coming from the fact that it is very much a race car. It's very, very comfortable. It doesn't have that bouncy, uh, GT3 style suspension, if you know what I'm talking about. So the shifting is blisteringly quick, even though it's a single clutch automated. It just pops. Can you hear some of that backfiring? <laughs> it is so much fun to drive. It's, uh, it's addictive, actually. I don't want to get out of it. All Lamborghinis have what they consider anima mode, which are uh, different settings for suspension, steering, and um, acceleration, throttle, response, and all that. And three modes that are available for this car are Strata, Sport, and Corsa. And as you change them, you can really see that the car behaves very differently. So when I'm in Strata mode, it's a very regular, comfortable, almost like a luxury sports car. As I go into sport, the character changes and it starts getting a little bit louder, a little bit more peppy. And then in Corsa, it's just full out race car. It's so fast. The automatic mode is actually not available in this mode. It has to be manually shifted, which is I prefer anyway. Uh, even though the automatic mode in the Strata mode is very, very comfortable, but shifting yourself is what the car was designed to drive like. So in a single clutch automated, it's always better to shift yourself because it gets you more involved with the car. It makes you feel the car. It makes you enjoy the car and enjoy the drive. From the sides, it's actually got fairly decent visibility out the back. And in reality, in this car, why would you even want to be looking behind you anyway? I mean, you know, you're probably the fastest car on the road, so there's no reason to be looking behind you in something like this. On top of all your regular traction control settings, this car also features a very interesting uh, all-wheel drive system and all-wheel steering system, which makes the car turn from the back as well. So it lowers your turning radius significantly, which allows you to take the corners much faster. It's a very interesting feel because you can actually feel it working and it's kind of counterintuitive because you can feel the car kind of turning on itself. If you get more practice with it, you really trust the car more and you can really push it through turns much faster. or the SVJ Coupe, is the fastest street legal car to ever drive on the Nürburgring. It has a lap record of 644.97, which is a statement to the car, a statement to Lamborghini to technology, obviously. And you can feel it, just the way that the car handles and acts. I can only imagine what it would be like to have this car on a track, just to see how this all-wheel drive system and all this power comes together, along with the increased downforce from the wings to just give you all the grip and it's a, it's just a blast to drive. And the sound, oh my God, the sound is just, it's it, visceral, I don't know what else to say. This car doesn't really have a competitor segment because there are no other product offerings in that $600,000 price point. Um, however, just top of mind, uh, you know, the 720S and the 48 P-Star are probably in that segment as well, but they're not really the same, you know? This feels so much more like a supercar. I don't know how else to describe that. Just the way it, it looks and acts, the size of the car, 
the attention that it gets from people all around you, it, it very much is a hypercar. And to get a hypercar for 600 grand is, is kind of a value to me. It's, it really feels like I, I'm driving a million dollar car. And that's a very interesting feeling because I don't know what it is that makes a million dollar car a million dollar car, but when you're driving one you know, and I feel like this car really does fit into that segment very well. But this has a, a rough kind of attitude to it, which I really enjoy. And I think that others that enjoy driving cars hard would enjoy it as well. It's not for everybody, granted, but for, for people that really enjoy driving and pushing themselves and the car, I think that this is a perfect product fit. It's a very aggressive looking car, it's a very aggressive driving car, it's a very aggressive sounding car. And this is the perfect car for someone that's looking for a no excuses, nothing hold back, uh, in your face type of sports car. Is that what you mean?